Breakout style video games were pretty popular at one time, both at arcades and on home computers. The games are based on a simple concept where you have to destroy a group of bricks at the top of the screen by bouncing a ball off a paddle at the bottom of the screen, and then you can move this paddle left or right to meet the ball. According to Wikipedia, Breakout was released in 1976 by Atari, and I found two versions for CPM which are both quite playable, and this is what I want to show in this video. DB Lick is the first conversion that I came across for CPM. It was written in Turbo Pascal and released in 1984 by D. Griffith and Andrew Zaslow. It, uh, it comes with the source code, which we can have a look at here. And this was configured for a K-Pro. And, uh, and it says it supports either the K-Pro 83 or 84 release. Um, however, K-Pros use ADM3A terminal codes. And therefore, this will also work with other machines that use or emulate this type of display, uh, such as the Commodore 128, which I'm using here. So uh, this is the source code. I won't go through all of it because, uh, well, looking at it like this won't be the most interesting thing. But at least you can see that it's got it. So if I run the program, and there we are. So we can choose a skill level. The Commodore 128 is a very slow CPM machine, and therefore even if I stick it on 9, which is meant to be the impossible skill level, it still isn't all that quick. Uh, random bounce says yes, and we want to be able to use the space bar as a paddle. Uh, so the key presses on this are comma and dot to go left and right. And then we can hold down the space. Now, it's got quite a nice display, and oh, I missed that. Okay, so space bar to continue. The problem is it's redrawing the screen each time I miss, which is a bit of a pain because it takes a little while on the Commodore 128. On other machines you wouldn't notice it quite so much. The other weird thing is that when the ball bounces off the bat, it goes below the bat. You have to watch now. There you are. See, it went below the bat, which is a bit of an odd thing. But other than that, it's a quite nice game. Uh, it's just a shame that you've only got the one skill level because um, because the highest level that it can work at is level 9. Although the source code is, fi is uh, included in this, uh, I couldn't do an awful lot with it, although I didn't really try in truth. But I tried to uh, run it. Uh, it doesn't. The keyboard, the uh, key presses don't seem to work uh, when I compile it on the CPM and try to run it. I don't know why that is. I don't imagine it'd be very hard to work out. But uh, but there it is. That's uh, that's it working in any case. The other program I want to show is called Evasion, or at least I say it's called Evasion. It's spelled E V A S one zero N. And the 10 in it, I assume, refers to the fact that it's a rewrite of a basic 10-liner game written for the ZX Spectrum. Uh, this, uh, this rewrite is written by, well, it says Marco's Retrobits, and it was uh, first, um, it was started in 2020. It says in the README that it's written on the ZX Spectrum Next, and like DB Lick, it's written in Turbo Pascal, and it includes a source code. I want to do this one in a slightly different order. I want to edit the source code, but I want to show the uh, uh, tinst command which uh, installs Turbo Pascal. The reason I want to show this is that there's a slight odd thing with a delay on the um, on this program in the source code. So if I run tinst here, and then this will allow us to configure the display, and it'll also allow us to set the speed of the machine that we're working on. So we get this installation menu here, and if I press S, this is one of the nice things about Turbo Pascal. It contains a, um, a couple of routines that handle the screen, and therefore if you've configured it properly, um, then that's all baked in for you. So I'm using a Commodore 128 here, and therefore I'm going to use number 4, which is an, ADMA, sorry, an ADM3A terminal. Try that again, yep, and then I don't want to alter the configuration for that. Uh, I want to set the frequency. So, Commodore 128, pretty slow CPM machine. I'm going to use 2 megahertz for it. Then the ZX Spectrum Next, which it said it was written for, uh, is 28 meg. Now, I don't know if that 28 megahertz would really compare to the 2 megahertz of a true Z80 processor, although in, in, the, true, in the case of the Commodore 128, it's a crippled 4 megahertz. Uh, Z80 processor crippled by the way that it was um, made to work on the Commodore 128, but I'll put that to the side. Um, the reason I want to show this though is that if I go in and edit the source code for uh, for Evasion, 
and then we'll include the error messages just in case I make an error whilst I'm uh, showing this. So I know what's going on. Right, okay. So we're working with file, uh, a uh, Pascal source code file, and then there's a delay loop in here. So um, the Commodore 1 trick is very slow to update the screen, so I'll search for it. So control Q, control, uh, sorry, control Q, F to find, and then we'll do del space colon equals, and then we'll find that in the source code file. And this is a delay loop. So we can see it here, del space colon equals 800. It says 28 megahertz assumed. Well, it shouldn't really assume 28 megahertz because that should be governed by the installation routine for uh, uh, for Turbo Pascal, and therefore, if you get the megahertz right in the installation routine, then the delay that you use will be relative to that. But um, that's okay. So I'm going to alter this on the Commodore 128. I find a figure of about 65 works quite well. I might do 60, make it a little bit quicker. And then the other thing I need to do, if I go uh, up a page with Control R, and up another page, and another, might be another one before that, yes there is. As you can see it's quite slow to update. Right. And I want to alter this. So we've got here the characters used for the, the ball, the bat, and the brick. So the comment, the code, the characters that I would like to use are commented out. So I'm going to delete that with Control Y, and I'll go down to the other one, the other comment, or end of the comment, and I'll do Control K B, and then go down a few characters to the end of that bit that I want to delete. Control K K to mark the end of the block, and then Control K Y to delete the block. The reason I wanted to do it that way, rather than just use Control Y, uh, rather than use Control Y a few times, is because of this. Uh, slow update on the Commodore 128 and then Control K S to save, Control K D to exit and then uh, another question just run. So let's run the program Turbo Pascal will, will compile it and then we'll be ready to run the program. So Evasion is a much more is, is a much stripped down version of uh, Breakout than DB Lick because it was based on this uh, 10 line basic code. But here we can see it's nice and smooth, the update's better. You can see there that uh, although I missed the ball, it didn't uh, have to redraw the whole screen. It just carried on from where it was. And the other thing you can see is that it actually bounces off the bat, whereas DBLick for some reason goes past the bat uh, before it bounces back. And there you are. And because the source code is included, if you wanted to include a scoreboard, you could just edit the source code and it would be really easy to do. So my ideal would be a blend between a DB Lick and Evasion. So there's lots of nice things with a DB Lick and as much as the screen is quite a nice layout. Although I quite like the simple layout on this, but it's nice to have the scoreboard. Uh, but the screen updates much, much better on this. So uh, swings and roundabouts. I guess you could also add in uh, a skill level then if you uh, extended it a bit like uh, DB Lick has. Evasion does allow you to pass, I think it does anyway, yes it does, it allows you to pass um, a delay on the command line if you wanted, so you could just type uh, the name of the command and then a delay, so we could have put our 60 there and that would allow us to do to do that. So all in all, two very playable versions of Breakout, uh, not as advanced as something like Arkanoid, which is probably my favourite uh, Breakout clone. But, uh, but fun nonetheless. So hopefully you liked seeing these. Uh, there's links on the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website to be able to download them. And uh, do have a look at some of our other videos and please subscribe.